Good morning, everybody. Sunday, the 21st of May. Yeah, winter's here, so we're starting to get here. Keeping my shoulders a bit warm, but it's nice to be with you this morning. Nice to be in your presence, to share God's word, to just acknowledge God as our Father who is in heaven. So again, just thank you for allowing me into your homes. A privilege. Um, yeah, and may we just have a great time together this morning as we share together. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 68. May God rise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. May you blow them away like smoke as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful, sing to God, sing in praise of his name, extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him, his name is the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, another Sunday. <laughs> Yo, the weeks are flying by. But when I say another Sunday, it was with joy. Because again, we come to just worship you. To be into your presence. To, to just acknowledge in reverence and in awe the majesty of the great I am. Lord, thank you that we can worship. Thank you that we have this opportunity to get together um, in all the different forms. Those that are meeting in churches today, those are meeting online, those are not well, that can have the privilege of being able to stay at home and recover um, and watch on cell phones and iPads. Lord, thank you for the technology. Thank you for the grace to be able to go beyond where we could go before to share your gospel. Lord, we also thank you for Jesus, the risen one, the ascended one, um, the living Jesus, dead and rose. Lord, just thank you for the cross. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins, your grace that you pour out into us when we say, Father, forgive me, a sinner. Lord, just thank you, thank you, thank you that we can know not only that we are saved, but also that we are forgiven. That there can be no doubt with absolute surety we can know. So Lord, may we know this morning as we spend time with you, as we hear your word and message, may we know that you are God. May we know that we are forgiven. May we know that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. May there be no doubt in our minds whatsoever so lord here we are accept our act of praise this morning a living act of worship in jesus name we pray amen our reading today is taken from john 17 1 to 11 john 17 1 to 11 after jesus said this he looked towards heaven and prayed father the hour has come glorify your son that your son may glorify you for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him now this is eternal life that they know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent i have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do and now, Father, glorify me in your presence and with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, 
but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. Just that far this morning and we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. Yeah, we find ourselves in that sort of awkward space. It's amazing. It's intense. That time sort of in the Christian calendar between the Ascension, uh, Thursday night, and in next Sunday, um, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So we're sitting with this tension of where we find ourselves. Um, on Thursday, on the Ascension Day service, we spoke about being prepared, waiting and expecting. Acts 1, 4 to 5 says to us, On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then last week, just going back a bit, um, Paul used this, this picture of the unknown idol to introduce God, the known God, um, to the Greeks through their, their sayings and stuff. So today Jesus shows us just how well we can know the known God through his relationship with the Father and the means he uses, which is prayer. So John 17 is that prayer. John 17 is deeply personal, intimate, a prayer not only for himself, but for his disciples, for believers present and future. In short, that includes us. This prayer, John 17, is all about us. So I want to challenge you. I know I've said it many a time because I really love this prayer in John 17. Go and read it. It's... 26 odd verses uh, take you about 15 minutes at most I think um, but go and read it Jesus in John 17 has just told the disciples that he is leaving and going to be with his father and in verse 33 the end of the chapter he says I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world he then looks up to heaven and he prays. The opening line of our, our passage. He looks to the heavens and prays. Pray. Prayer, as Charles Spurgeon says, is a breath of faith. And prayer meetings are the lungs of the church. Martin Luther says that to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Mother Teresa, God shapes the world by prayer. The more praying there is in the world, the better the world will be, the mightier the forces against evil. <laughs> Listen to this one carefully. Someone wisely said, seven days without prayer makes one week. It's an amazing prayer. Even though We've only read the first 11 verses. It contains some great themes. Themes like time, glory, love, unity. But then there's also these great petitions. Um, Jesus prays, glorify me. Keep them, speaking about us, the disciples. Sanctify them again, us and the disciples. That they all may be one. And then back to the glory. That they, we, may be, behold God's glory. So we have these themes, we have this, these petitions, um, but what I really want to get at today is to understand Jesus' concerns voiced in this prayer. Jesus' concern is real, it's evident. Um, ironically, or not ironically, or factually, whichever way you want to look at it, um, there are about 19 occasions in the prayer where Jesus refers to the world and the impact that the world can have on us. It's always negative to the world, um, but he, he identifies these concerns. He says, we live in a world that is deceived, blinded by Satan. In 2 Corinthians 4, we read, 
even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And secondly, um, and it's going to sound weird, but the truth is this, we're living in dangerous times. You might say, oh, no, we say whatever. we're living in dangerous times, in a dangerous world. Um, and 1 John 2 warns us, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I mean, let's face it, it's not pretty out there. And we need to pray against it. We need to stand firm. We need to stand strong. James 1 speaks of trials and temptations, listening and doing, and the things that defile us. And how easily it is to be tainted by the goings on of the world. And James ends chapter 1 by saying this, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Keep yourself from being defiled, polluted, tainted by the world. It's a graphic picture because those words are the hectic words. Um, but that's one of the things that Jesus prays against on our behalf. He says, don't let them be defiled. Keep them safe. Don't let them be deceived. But I think the one that speaks quite loudly to me is number four. Jesus is concerned about unity. That they may be one as we are one. I mean, the world right now is splintered. It's not even divided. I think it's just um, splintered. Politics, religion, class, race, sex, entitlement, education. The list goes on and on. We're trying so hard to be politically correct that we're even implementing hate speech bills and freedom of religion legislation, changing the way we speak to be gender neutral. I mean, all of this is going on around us and it's just absolute madness. But the good news is this. Jesus overcame the world. He's overcome it all. He's done it, been there, all of those things. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world. Uh, sorry, let me try that again. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In our passage, Jesus simply reveals the truth. He reveals the one true God. In verse 3 we read, Now this is eternal life that you, that they know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He says about himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Furthermore, God is our protection, our shield in times of trouble. All we need to do is go and read the Psalms of David. It, it speaks all of these things. God's protection is evident. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells, dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Just a thought to remember. We may struggle, sin, stumble, fall, but God, through prayer, through this prayer of Jesus, is always looking out for us, always working in us, sanctifying us, moving us, purifying us every moment of every day. God's grace is revealed through our faith journey. We are works in progress. I mean, just go and read Philippians 1 verse 6. 
God starts a good work in us and God will complete it at the coming of Christ Jesus. But we need to become unified, one, to be one. Ecclesiastes 4 says to us, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But bet anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. I guess it's the old adage, together we stand, divided we fall. Jesus, through his life, his death and his resurrection, and by this very, very prayer, apart from salvation, offers us truth, security, sanctification and unity. So in conclusion, this, I don't know, it didn't go where I thought it was going when I started it. Thanks be to God. That's his word to us today. John 17 is the greatest prayer ever prayed. Go and read it. It's godly. It's priestly. It's unselfish, unconditional, full of love and full of hope. John 17 is Jesus' prayer for you and I. It's different from the Lord's Prayer. This is Jesus praying for himself, for you and for me. And that's why the Lord's Prayer stands on its own and it stands strong. And I want to end today by us saying that together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed the message. I certainly enjoyed preparing it. And I pray that you are truly blessed um, by God our Father. Have an amazing week. And I say to us all, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's will. Amen.